What's up, everybody? It's your friendly neighborhood gamer, your host, Koshi, and welcome to Legends of Dice Cafe, where we learn about tabletop RPGs together from old school to modern, and from time to time, play some of my favorite video games. And if you're new to the channel, I drop a new video every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and check it out. Today's video, we're going to do things a little different. Today, we will be running Karen solo. This is my first time actually playing a solo RPG on camera. So this should be pretty interesting. And on top of that, I'm going to be solo RPGing different than I have ever done before. When I can't find a group to play with, honestly, playing the multiplayer solo kind of helps me to learn the mechanics, a great way for me personally to learn how to play the game. If you're new to the channel, I've been playing tabletop RPGs for a little less than a year. Once I learned the term homebrew, I'm like, bet. I started to work on creating my own world. So, and it's just a small, a very basic foundation. I'm going to allow my Karen character to help me create more of my world. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to show you guys another way that I play solo RPG. And these are strictly made for solo play. Fabled Lands is a fantastic book so far, and it has a series of books, and it's really cool. You have your rules, your character creation, and everything you need to go ahead and start your journey. And of course, I don't know if you're familiar, if you're not familiar with this type of solo RPG, you would just make a choice, and then the choice would tell you what number to actually go through. It'll give you options. It's pretty cool, you know? It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, I have this and then another one. I've started this one. It was very interesting first time around playing this thing the first time all in one sitting i trusted a lady <laughs> she ended up robbing me i met her again i gave her a chance and i trusted her she gave me a suggestion on how i could make money she ended up setting me up <laughs> and then i met mermaids that put me in a trance kidnapped me for a few days and i woke up with no equipment <laughs> so uh i've been taking a pause <laughs> from that game since then you know so, and since then, I picked up another one, and this is another solo RPG, and again, it has multiple books, and so far, I've just, just started it. I find it pretty interesting, you know? And again, it's the same thing, it comes with character creation, it comes with the rules, and then, of course, you just make decisions, and it has the numbers, and it's pretty cool. If you're interested in watching me solo any of these or a little bit more information on them, leave a comment below. So when I first found out about the ability to homebrew things, I thought that was freaking fantastic, okay? Like I have like a whole world in my mind and I'm like, and I finally found a hobby where I could really explore <laughs> the world and stuff. So I thought about creating my own homebrew world. I don't really know too much about what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm just jotting my ideas down and and so I have a small foundation. I have the name of my world and a few towns, cities. I'm not sure how I want to really take it, but I figured it would be a really cool idea if I took my Karen character through starting with the foundation that I already have in my world and use this character to help flesh out and to create more of it. What better way to expand on the world that I've created than to take a character I've created through that world? Allow them to make some choices. We're going to use some oracles. Now, for the first time, I've actually created my own tables. But if you're new to or curious about playing solo RPGs, lots of books like Scarlet Heroes is a fantastic book. It's a great book for multiple people. It's a good book for solo. And at the end of the book, it actually gives you information on playing solo. It gives you ideas for quests, helps you to build the world, NPCs, monsters. It has a lot of options in there to help spark some creativity, whether you're a solo RPG or running an actual campaign with your players. So again, for solo RPG, tonight I chose Karen for my character creation as well as my rule system. It's super thin. I don't know if you're new to Karen. If you are, I created a review and I uploaded it onto my channel. So go on over there and check it out at Legends and Dice Cafe. It's a super, super light rule system, only 18 pages. I created my own random tables because <laughs> why not right and then i also for the very first time i created my first two maps my character is not going to start with all of this inf with knowing all of this information so i'm just sharing with you guys so this was the map i created of the pyramid that we will be exploring da -da -da. i was pretty excited i really don't know what i'm doing but i'm like 
Why not? <laughs> Why not give it a try? And then I created a town. Um, this is a really, really, really rough draft. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm missing on this table, but I figured as we're playing along, definitely leave some comments if you have any suggestions along the way. And I'm just going to kind of create it on the fly. And what I don't know, I just figure it out along the way. Because <laughs> why not, right? So Karen is super, super, super light. I figured we go ahead and just create the characters right now as well. And just for extra info, I do this thing where I have books and I create a table of contents and I number my pages so that way I know where all the information is and I can get to my info quicker. But before we create the character, let me go ahead and introduce you to a little bit of just a little tiny bit of the world that I've created. So the name of the world is called Ashra 2. Somehow I wanted to incorporate ancient Egypt with ancient China. I even created a few, I don't know if I want to make them towns or cities. This character that I'm going to create is going to be adventuring in a town outside of one of the cities that I've created. And I tried to work on a little bit of the history. Uh, so far, all I have is ancient times, Ashra II lived in harmony, worshiping, living in harmony and peace. And there was a tribe called the Kokolin tribe, and they believed that they were superior and they were the first to use blood magic and they opened up a portal and a gateway to another dimension allowing visitors into our world or into Ashra 2's world and some were good and some were bad and as magic came into the world some were resistant towards it and some were ready to receive it all right so far how the adventure goes so i have the capital of Ashra 2 is called Xing Zi Su and the natives of that land are called Xin Xians and the queen her name is Xian and I just randomly created this. I like what I've created so far. And I'm going to keep it as being a part of Asha too. Queen Cian. So my characters, I already know that they're going to be brother and sister. And we've been summoned to a small village outside of Shin Cian to speak with the Queen Cian's top general, Sin Ye. And we're going to meet inside of a tavern. And from there, they'll let us know exactly what mission they want us to do the brother and sister they were known for being fantastic adventurers being fearless so that's why the queen chose these two here's a small town outside of the city that we're going to be visiting so before we do that of course let's go ahead and create our characters again if you're new my first mini i absolutely adore it okay my first character that i've played and i'm still playing in the campaign that i started back in february is a clerk a half elf Clark. And so that was the idea that I had when I created this on Hero Forge. And of course, look, my name is on the bottom. I super love this thing. Okay. I've got my dice tray, which I got from Etsy or Etsy. I can't remember which way you pronounce it, but uh, it, it came engraved. But of course, I painted it because I like to tag things and make them my own and stuff like my dice box. I love putting my name on things. Okay. I got this from... I want to say Hobby Lobby, just for a few dollars. This is the very beginning of my journey. And look at my dice now. And again, less than a year. <laughs> okay, I never knew how cool dice were until I started playing tabletop RPGs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create two characters, a male and a female. All right, done. So I've got my two characters. I've got the brother. Ironically, and I was hoping for it, and you're probably not going to believe me, <laughs> but I Ying. I created the name out of the, the names again, came out of Xavier's Guide to Everything. The male is Ying, is his name. He's a cleric. And then for the female, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce, but we're going to say G. She's a butcher. And then I've got my attributes and then my equipment for both of them. If you wanted to take the multiplayer games and turn them into solo play, Karen, if you were looking for a place to start, Karen would be fantastic. It took me literally a few minutes to create two character rolling on the charts on the tables that were that are inside if you're already. All right, so again, we're going to be meeting the Queen's General, Sinye, in a small town right outside of Shinsian. I haven't created the name of the town, so if you have any suggestions, drop them down in the comments. I didn't number it, but this is the tavern right here. And again, we're going to kind of create the story as we go along. All right, so I've got my character, Ying and G. We're going to meet him, the general, at the tavern. And for the general, I'm going to use this one. We get to the tavern, and the general lets us know that there was a red wizard who stole a very powerful item from Queen Cien called 
Eye of Ashra. It's a wand that can supposedly bring back the dead. Who or what he's bringing back, they do not know. And the only information that they can provide me with is that they tracked them to a temple on the southwest side of the village. And we were told that was the only information that they had. So we were told to explore the village, find a little bit more information about who the Red Wizard is trying to resurrect, what we might be expecting when we get to the actual temple, which is right here. All right, and again, we're creating it on the fly. So I took the time out to number certain areas. So I'm going to explore and check these areas out. And then I'm going to use my tables for encounters, treasure, what's inside of the chest. Well, that's going to be for the actual pyramid or the temple. But, you know, different tables. We'll add on whatever it is that we need, whatever I'm missing that I didn't think about. Before we go on our journey, how about we explore the actual tavern where we are right now? I've got a table called Town Encounters. We're going to roll a D10. And I have extras just in case these gosh darn dice don't act right. Okay, let's see. D10. Seven. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. Woo! <laughs> it says nothing. I got a little nervous because I saw, I forgot what I put on here. Bandits, monsters, so nothing. So nothing's going on on here. So, all right. <laughs> Woo! All right. So, so let's see. If we were coming out of the tavern and hitting the road, if we came in, and this is where we came in at, was the actual bridge. So if we came in a bridge, more than likely, being the type of people that we are, we would have seen this area right here. So let's explore number five. Fingers crossed, too. I'm hoping that neither of these characters will die, but I have a strong feeling, guys. <laughs> I have a strong feeling that they're probably going to end up. One of them is going to go. But it's all good because, again, we'll improvise and we'll just create on the fly. So we're going to go to Area 5 and explore it on the Town Encounters. D10, number 2. Oh, my God. A monster, of course. At the very beginning of the story, I would... So I should probably go back and redo these encounters. All right, so here we end up encountering a monster. And I created a table of monsters. We're going to fight a wolf. And we're going to roll a d4 to see how many wolves we actually fight. Wow, four freaking wolves. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> this is how we start a story out. You know what? I was just thinking, instead of possibly dying my first time around, I was thinking maybe so... Instead of just going gung-ho and attacking these wolves, I'm going to first see if maybe I can charm them, possibly. So that way, I don't have to kill them. They don't have to kill us. We can save this fight for another day. You feel me? So I'm going to use for my, I'm going to use the will. If I roll equal to or under my will, it's a success. And if I roll above it, it's a fail. I'm going to roll using the cleric's will. And that is a 13. So we either need to hit a 13 or hit under. If we succeed, we'll take it from there. If we fail, we'll take it from there as well. Woo! You know what? Let's use a different dice. <laughs> Five. Oh, yeah. All right. Boom. We succeed. So we're going to charm them with some food and just with these sexy eyes that these guys have i mean come on now you see and we'll give them a ration each so let's see we both have three rations so now we each have one ration which i'm sure that i can purchase back let me get him off of the bridge just in case there are any cars coming or anything i don't want him getting hit so we give them a ration each and we charm them telepathically feeling wise everything's okay so they can go about their way without chewing one of my legs off or one of my sister's legs off and we bid you adieu Whew. all right let's see the next thing that we will probably come to is let's see we go to section six let's try that out let's grab our handy dandy tables see town encounters i'm sure i could have definitely had more in here but again this is just the very beginning and this is my first time around actually doing something like this 
or even playing in this manner where I'm the one creating the table. So we'll just continue to build as we go. All right, so we're exploring section six. I'm looking forward to developing my skills as far as creating maps. I thought this was pretty fun to do. And we're gonna roll a D10 to see what we encounter. Whew, you know what, let's try a different color because let's see. Doo -doo -doo. You know what, let's open the dice tray up. Since we have the option, right? Why not? Eight. Oh, fee. Oh, I thought it was a treasure chest. Ah, uh, but it's better. It's nothing. So that's <laughs> that's better than that's better than some monsters. You know what I'm saying? So we find nothing in area six. All right, and you know what? Let me make a note as well to create some battle maps from different areas so I can pull them out. You feel me? So when it's time to throw down. All right, battle maps, check. Let's see, so we're right here. And as you see, there's a little opening right here between the trees. So I wanna say that I would probably see this area first as opposed to seeing this area over here. So we're gonna hold off on hitting the temple or let's go back up to the tavern so we don't get lost. We already went that way. And I know we see this right here. So from this area and from the road, we'll be able to see this right here. So we'll go to area two and see what's popping right there. One. God, doggy. Okay, monsters again. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we won't panic. All right. And let's see. We'll roll to see what kind of monster. All right, so we roll a D8 to see what type of monster. I'm honestly, I'm sick of this town already. I don't... <laughs> I don't see myself vacationing here at all for any reason whatsoever. All right. So I was hoping we would freaking find some treasure by now. It's crazy. All right. So let's see. Let's roll to see what type of monster we'll be fighting. Let's try this one. Let's add a six. Boom. A snake. Let's roll to see how many snakes we actually fight. Let's try a different one. A different... Let's try this cool D4. Three. Dag on three snakes. All right. All right. We can do this. All right. And who happens to have three snake Lego people laying around? <laughs> okay. So we'll put these right here. <laughs> Cause why not, right? So um, I'm not sure if I actually want to fight them, to be perfectly honest. And so, let me see what I'm going to do. Let's see, let's see. I'm going to try to charm them using my willpower. See, my cleric has a willpower of 13. So, I'm going to try that. All right. Let's see. Yellow or green? Let's go with green. All right. Let's see. I'm going to attempt to charm these snakes to leave us alone, but we can't afford to give them any food, so let's, <laughs> we'll figure it out from there. 10. Oh, fantastic. So that is a success. Hmm. As a cleric, I'll have them look into my eyes and feel nothing but fear and anguish, anything to make them scurry away. So far, the town seems to be pretty empty of people, <laughs> but I'm sure that we can figure out a way to weave that into the story about what's going on down here in the actual temple. So let's see. So from where we are, we can possibly, we more than likely will be able to see these before we see this house because we got the bushes over here covering my view. So we'll go and scurry down here to area four. I honestly hope we never come back to visit this town ever again. All right, so let's check out area four. Let's roll on our table. Let's see, let's try a different. D20, because why not? Let's see. Two. Oh my God. What is up with these monsters? Okay. Um. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and roll to see what type of monster we're going to be fighting. God. Oh my God. What is up with this town? All right. So let's see. A D8. Let's try a different D8. Do -do 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 A gnome. What the heck is a gnome doing? <laughs> hey, whatever. Let's see how many we fight. One. Oh. 
fantastic. All right, so we might actually do this one right here. So I've definitely got to get myself some miniatures, some more miniatures made. But in the meantime, the gnome will use the guy from Batman. I just happen to have another Lego. <laughs> just kind of hanging around the house. Ooh, how? What a coincidence, huh? So we'll use that as the gnome that we're going to fight. So the cleric is up first. Ying is going to run up on him <laughs> and attack him with a dagger which is a D6 for damage, but I'm going to stop it there and we'll pick it back up on part two. I don't want to make the video too long. We'll leave it where my cleric Ying is getting ready to attack the gnome with a dagger. All right, so we'll leave it there and then we'll pick it back up in part two. So make sure you stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave any comments, suggestions. So I hope you enjoyed part one in a series to come and i'll also be doing a few other solo rpgs the next one i'm going to be doing is basic fantasy third edition and also stay tuned for part two of karen thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all of the support don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on part two of karen and part one of basic fantasy solo and I'll see you guys soon. All right? Peace.